So it's Teardown Again Day on Startup Chuck. And so the other day, my buddy and I on Project Night tried to fix this Nest smoke alarm. It's a smoke alarm slash CO detector, and it's about five years old and it started beeping at them. And so either way, we tried to clean it out and it still kept beeping. And as opposed to trust it, it's probably better to just get a new one and tear it apart and see what makes it tick. This is the Nest smoke alarm slash CO detector. And fortunately, I had already taken it apart once, lost the video, and so I had to grab all the parts and loosely reassemble it the way I took it apart. But I know a lot more about it now. So in either case, uh, four screws, and then you can lift off this main top part. And then um, immediately you have a detector here. This is the smoke detector. Usually it's got an aluminum mesh around it and it's a brake beam sensor. So you have some LEDs and then a sensor and if it notices too many in there, then the voltage will drop and then it'll trigger the alarm. So triple A's, which is nice. And then the first part is the line voltage to five volt power board. And so basically it takes line voltage in and then dumps out five volts right there. And it's probably a pretty clean five volts because this thing is practically a life-saving device. So that might be something that's useful. Um, and so then all of this stuff came shielded. I ripped off the shields and there's a couple of pretty cool chips on here. So um, a bunch of ARM, 120 megahertz chips, some uh, Zigbee chips, another ARM chip. Uh, basically it's got Zigbee, I think, for smoke detector to smoke detector communication, and then Wi-Fi and all sorts of stuff. Um, it's got a microphone and then on this side is the super loud speaker and then underneath a whole bunch of shielding here which I'd bent was the uh, carbon monoxide sensor so it's interesting because uh, there's a video online of somebody saying that if you're CO detector is not working to blow out this guy, but that's actually the smoke detector. And you, I don't think you can blow out the carbon monoxide detector. It's right here. So I looked this guy up and it's about, oh, it's, it says RU Figaro. And then the part number is TGS5342. And it looks like it was 23 bucks on Alibaba. You probably could get them for five in bulk. I don't know. I'm sure this guy's about five bucks. This guy's probably more since it's custom. It had Nest written on the top. This chip itself is 12, another five, another five. I mean, there's probably about $50 in parts here. And it seems super well built for what you're getting. So then here's a speaker for it to talk to you. And then um, on the other side, there was this board it's got a switch and then a whole bunch of leds that went through this uh, ring that lends them and then you had this button that went on top press this button and then it was interesting so this is a pyrometer which is either a motion detector or you can use it for heat detection and so I was really surprised that they had that in addition to the smoke alarm. So I don't know why that was. I don't know whether or not they wanted to have motion detection or if they wanted it to be a, uh, a heat sensing alarm and not just smoke. So kind of fascinating from that respect. Um, they're kind of cool because most pyrometers have like a germanium lens or something, so they're super reflective and shiny. And then, yeah, so 
That's kind of the whole teardown of the nest system. Now, if you compare this nest system to, I have another broken kitty smoke alarm, carbon monoxide alarm here, that um, it was at its 10 year point. So this guy was manufactured in 2013. And then after 10 years, it started beeping and would not stop unless I replaced it versus this nest alarm was manufactured in, well, this was 2015 replaced by 2025. It started beeping whether or not it was, uh, you know, forced manufacture or failed part, forced replacement, I don't know. But either way, so we'll open this guy up. And we can already see that this is significantly less complex. So this is usually like 50 something dollars, 50, 60 dollars. And so we've got a speaker, a high pitch siren, light pipe, a button, um, I don't know what you call plunger. And then this is something I saw in the Nest thermostat too. A lot of things are coated in a wax. And I don't know why that is necessarily. Um, and it's, it's kind of interesting because it says do not wax area. It also says kitty propriety and confidential, which is funny because like it's public. Here it is. So I don't know how it's proprietary and confidential. Um, but they have a significantly larger carbon monoxide sensor. I don't know if it's any more robust. Um, I'm actually going to see if I can't remove it and find some sort of, oh, there's some sort of markings on it. So I'll have to look that up in a minute and see if I can find it. And then they've got some sort of generic um, sensor for the uh, smoke, which looking at it, it's not an ionization one. It's also a light sensing one. So it looks like there's a receiver here and an emitter here and it shoots across. And then I don't know if it bounces off and then hits this or not, but there's a whole lot going on in there. Um, and then it looks like this is their proprietary chip and you can program it and we'll see if there's anything on the back side, but I'm not thinking there's too much. Again, a lot cheaper. There's practically no screws in this entire design. Snap clips. Yeah, nothing on the back side. And so, except for everything's covered in wax. Um, and I wonder if that's the like, keep things cool. If a fire hits it, give it a little bit more fire rating. So, Either way, I mean, I bet these speakers and buzzers are worth keeping and hanging on to, so I'll save those guys because why not have some cool speakers and buzzers to play with? Yep, so there's a little speaker. Pull out this buzzer. Although the buzzers are, like, so high-pitched, it's probably very few cases where you'd want to have it used all in a project, but yep. So there you go. Oh, hell look at that. It's pretty much the same buzzer that they used in the nest one. And I bet you this would have been off the shelf compared to some custom one that nest was using. Um, so I like how the nest one has double A's cause I hate, nine volt batteries look they're so cheap this, they don't even have like a real switch they have a just metal contactor that's how cost effective they just kept reducing the part count on this until it was like the simplest thing ever which isn't necessarily bad maybe it makes it more robust you know if there's less to fail so i will say i mean it lasted 10 years and that's when you should replace it anyways uh i talked to a a firefighter and he said that typically the CO monitors in standalone CO monitor uh, plug-in wall wart ones is better and last longer 
it's a better, longer lasting chemical sensor than what you might get in a regular combination alarm. So he re recommends put up regular smoke alarms and then get separate CO alarms um, and you're better off. All right, let's uh, throw all this stuff out now and recycle it as we need to. Thanks for watching. I couldn't find any more information on that carbon monoxide module from Kitty. Looks like it's either rebranded for them or custom made. Either way, you could probably uh, use a substitute one out there. Essentially, they typically draw a fair amount of energy and um, they measure you know, either resistance or capacitance across them. So check the spec sheet. But thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll have a bunch more other teardown videos. I got a whole bunch of other stuff to take apart, like uh, a Roomba and a Gab watch and a whole bunch of other things. I love taking stuff apart, learning about how they put it together. All right, thanks.